and welcome to Animal Watch and this week we're talking <laughs> baby Samoids! I'm so excited today as I've been invited to Samoid enthusiast Kate Moncaster's home for a very special surprise. I wonder what it is. Hello! Hello! Hi! Hey, baby! Hey, Kate! Hi! It's freezing! <laughs> I think you better come in. You match my jumper, you realise that? Arctic temperatures. Absolutely. <laughs> Arctic yeah, you dogs, tell them. Arctic temperatures. Come on then, have a look around the corner. Oh, what is it? Ah! Puppies! <laughs> puppies! There's so many puppies. Come on. Puppy, oh, puppy, puppies! My God! Oh, my God! Oh, they're gorgeous, Kate. Look they at them are. all. They are. How old are they? They're six weeks on Monday. I feel so happy right now. <laughs> Anybody ever seen anything so cute? I don't think you're eating my, you're eating my jumper. Look, I match you all today. Puppy, 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 puppies! After meeting the pups, Kate called them all through to have some solid food. It was wonderful to see how excited they were, and Mum was always watching over her fluffy white brood. These are so gorgeous. I know. <laughs> Samoids are quite an ancient breed and of course like a lot of the polar breeds um, they go back thousands of years. When were the first um, sort of sightings and accounts of dogs like this? Going back to 16th century, 17th century when the explorers went towards the Antarctic there are writings that they did where they first spotted the breed of dog and they did come in many colours then as well. They were black, they were brown, and that colouring now seems to have been bred out of them. But the Kennel Club standard still says you can have three colours of a Samoid. You can have a white, a biscuit, or a cream. Being a groomer yourself, you know the amount of work it takes to actually keep one of these dogs. Initially, um, we start brushing the puppies as early as possible to get them used to it. You do have to keep on top of the coat because it's a thick double coat and they get this under layer on top layer. Mm. And, and eventually, when they're adult dogs, they go into what we call a full blow. And when it just goes, <laughs> their coat should never be clipped because they need that coat in the winter, it's to keep them warm, they've got that undercoat. And then in the summer, the long guarders take the heat away from the body. And having a long coat means that the coat parts and the air goes through and flows. Mm. If you clip the dog, the hair's dense, and so the dog would just get hotter and hotter. Yeah. They're very pink, aren't yeah. they, underneath? Having this reflective coat, protects them, doesn't it, from it does. the sun. In order to keep a Samoid nice and healthy, what would you feed them? Uh, these puppies were weaned uh, onto raw at three weeks of age. That raw was nature's many country hunter. They are balanced and complete. They've got superfoods in them. They've got turkey, there's salmon. Um, so you've got everything in there to give the pups the best start in life. All the vitamin and calcium ratios are correct as well. What sort yeah. of age would you start to give them, say, a piece of raw chicken, chicken leg or something like that? I would start them at about nine to ten weeks on duck wings and I would actually give it to them frozen okay. as opposed to um, defrosted because they're little gums, they've got all this teething going on and they won't be able to eat the wing but they'd certainly have a really good gnaw at it and it would be cooling on the gums. Twelve to fourteen weeks you could probably start on chicken wings. How big do these get? A good healthy male you'd want around about 24 uh, to 28 kilos and the girls they come in at a very neat sort of 19 to 23 kilos. And what's the um, life expectancy of a Samoid roughly? 12 to 14 years. They're not a short-lived breed. My vet is actually quite balanced and uh, you know 
he'll, he'll suggest that they get initially vaccinated, but sometimes over vaccinating is not really something that some people like to do these days. What's your view on that? This is a, a, a passionate view of mine. Over vaccinating is causing adverse reactions in dogs um, in early health and late health. A report that was given by the WSAVA in 2011 uh, WSAVA being the World Small Animal Veterinary Association, that dogs, if they have to be vaccinated, it shouldn't be done any more than three years. Um, my take on that is that dogs, if you give them what's called a titer test, that will show you their immunity to the core diseases of distemper, hepatitis and parvovirus. How does the titer test work then? The dog goes into the vet, they take a small blood sample from the neck, it gets sent off to a lab and then you'll get a score back between 0 and 6 for each of those diseases and anything that's a score is immunity for that disease. That's immunity for life because you can't boost immunity by giving more vaccinations. They've either got it or they haven't got it. You assess the owners, don't you? Absolutely. They have to be correct owners for the breed. They have to convince me that they've got the commitment. It's a lifetime commitment. And as we're saying, there's so much that goes with yeah. the breed that needs to be understood, such as the grooming and the barking and the digging and, and the destruction. Feeding. Don't buy one off an advert or a website. Uh, do your research, go and see the puppies, go see the mum and the dad of the puppies and expect a grill in. If you get a grill in, that's a good yes. breeder. And if you can't see the parents, then I'd be worried that you're buying from a puppy mill, which is an absolute no. And it's not just the fact that you're supporting puppy farming, it's the fact that a lot of these dogs have diseases, don't they? They yeah. don't care what they breed from. So these dogs do like to bark. They are a very vocal breed and it's not necessarily um, an aggressive bark. It's that they like to talk back to you. They like to let you know that they're there. They like to greet you when you come home. They like to let you know when they want out, when they want feeding. You can train them from an early age not to bark and it's all about repetition and reward. So when they're quiet, you reward and if they bark, they don't get a reward. They do like to chase things like, you know, like squirrels and birds. My one jumped into a lake in Battersea Park and, and was chasing a swan. They don't calm down, do they, until they get quite a bit older. My eight year old is still like a puppy. It loves company. Um, if you do need to work, short hours, obviously more preferable, but they would welcome a dog walker that would come in and see them every few hours or a member of the family. But no, I'd never leave a dog on its own for more than no. two hours. Do you think they'd become destructive as well? Very. People have a habit of giving puppies slippers because that's funny when you see a puppy de destroy a slipper. And the best thing to do is actually give the puppy a toy that it should have and do an exchange rather yeah. than tell it off. But also they love to dig, don't they? You can't have a nice lawn, but a good thing to give them is actually a sand pit. Yes. They do love to dig in a sand pit. Yeah. Going back and actually looking at the reason why Arctic breeds dig, in the summer, obviously they dig into the soil because they want to stay cool and put their stomach down in the cool earth and that makes them feel good. And then in the winter time, Siberian Huskies as well, will dig in the snow to lay themselves down in order to stay warm because the, the snow is insulating. As a dog breed, they absolutely adore being run on a rig and you love running them, don't you? You run them, don't you, at the cooler part of the year because it's not good for them, is it, to, yeah. to run when the weather's hot? Anything above 11, then we won't run them. They absolutely live to run. They're a trek breed, a freight breed, like a Malamute would be. We've got this fantastic little video, didn't we, of when you were running yeah. some of your Samoids the other yeah. week and a, and a squirrel went past when they were running it. And I'm actually going to show you guys this video. Please give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel by clicking the button down there and I will give you a link to Kate's website if you want to find out more about Samoids, if you want to ask some information. And I'd just like to finish by showing you a little bit of the rig running that we did last year because it's Christmas and I think it's rather Christmassy. Bye for now. Bye. <laughs>
Yeah, takeoff is quite fast. <laughs> God, they love it, don't they? Right. Woo! Yes, we're going to go G. Go G. It's a bit bumpy here. <laughs> If you would like to find out more about Samoids, then you can drop by Kate's website here.